Hello, everyone, and uh, I would be proud to introduce you to Ishitan Gun. Well, in English, they call you Ishitan Gun, right? And uh, my name is Tarkan. Uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Comparisonator. Today is, uh, I mean, always we talk about football data, but when we talk about Ishitan Gun, well, I'd like to talk to you first who he is. Firstly, welcome. And uh, born in 1975, undergrad degree from Boğaziçi University, which is the leading university in, in Turkey. Then international finance in uh, City University of New York, uh, while working in the finance industry for more than six years there. Returning to Turkey as a VP Met Capital Partners is an investment company. Then... Uh, Galatasaray times. Well, we always remember you in the times in uh, executive board in charge of the strategic planning and development. But then, I think it was in 2016, around the summer of 2016, and you decided to buy the majority shares of... Um, Fortuna Citat, which is the Eredivisie team. And if, as far as I'm concerned, it was like a, a, the, on the blink of the liquidation, I think, if I'm not mistaken, right at the bottom of the, uh, the league, then uh, with financial difficulties, but promotion to Eredivisie, um, then you're teaching right now in all these uh, classes in management and uh, master program in Geneva. So you're a very colorful character. Well, tell us a little bit about, because you have been using Comparisonator for a very long time as well. And you are no doubt data oriented person. How did you start this data process? Maybe the way that you use Comparisonator and the progress of Fortuna Citat. The ball is with you. Thank you, Tarkan. Nice to be your guest. Of course, we are uh, friends for a very long time. And of course, uh, other than the working relationship, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, well, as you said, I'm almost now 15 years working in football. First as a professional capacity and in the last eight years, I'm uh, actively the chairman of a, a club in in the Dutch uh, league. Uh, to be honest, I consider myself lucky because uh, we we really witnessed the transformation of uh, football to a more, more data driven uh, uh, industry over the I, and it accelerated. I think over the last five six years. Because I remember like early 2010s, uh, these were very, uh, how do you say, eccentric uh, approach to football. Uh, it's uh, the What's traditional data? way. I of... can only see the player. You know, I want to yes. see him. We all want to see him, but we want to evaluate them beforehand. Eh? Of course. I mean, when you think about it, you know, it's uh, technology changes so many things. Because in the past, you had to send a physical scout to watch the player a few games. Uh, preferably more than one scout, write a report, etc. So, of course, there's a lot of subjective judgment when you are uh, trying to make uh, arrive at, this, um, at a decision about a player, either incoming or outgoing, replacement, etc. So, uh, I think the data revolution, which I think you played in, uh, I will come to Comparisonator because I've been familiar with all the solutions uh, since let's say 10 years uh, of course first there was a video uh, uh, data bank which uh, i know you were also in from the wise in, scout times together with wise scout back in yes, 2000 that of course came the data revolution it's um, today of course as we are doing i'm not directly involved with the technical affairs of course but what whatever we have been seeing in the uh, at the uh, at the back office, let's say non-technical operations, you know, we uh, we also witnessed a very strong professionalization of football. 
uh, up until very recently and still you you know also you have many uh, big club as clients uh, things the traditional way of running clubs was still dominant it is still dominant but more and more we see uh, uh, everyone is attracted to uh, the use of data because those who don't will be left behind that is I think the uh, it's clear as day for uh, to me uh, of course it's also a generational issue because the older generations they are a bit reluctant or sometimes even afraid or even paranoid uh, about these new developments because at the end if when people are confronted with something that they don't know or they are not familiar or comfortable with the initial reaction this is human uh, nature I think it's uh, resistance so in the beginning I've also witnessed a lot of football people on the pitch like uh, being very suspicious about the use of data in player judgment etc but uh, I think now it's clear that uh, the whole game I think football is about or the management of football I think is about punching above your weight how can you do this you need to have some kind of edges. And I always say the people, the most important people in a club is not the chairman, is not the uh, even the head coach. In my opinion, the most important people in a club are the pe people who are in charge of recruitment. Because that either breaks you or makes you at the end of the day. A club's uh, most important assets is uh, their players. So you need to basically invest in the right decisions. Of course, can everybody can we be right hundred percent of the time? Impossible. I think if you uh, even some players who are technically very uh, suitable for a club may perform terrible in one club, and the same player can do wonder, wonders in another club. This is uh, this is football. Uh, but to... we use. Go ahead. Yeah, what I wanted to ask you, right? Um... For so many people, so many scouts you have, I know, and very valuable uh, team members you have. So how do you yourself validate what they bring you? In the end, yes. I mean, always the decision is made collaboratively and uh, the coach is involved and all the stakeholders inside the club. But you yourself making a decision on the player, uh, how does that work? The grand at the end of the at the end of the day, someone has to push the final button to say yes or no. I think you are asking about that yes, uh, yes. Uh, process. But we use comparisonator heavily because I sat down with our sporting director also last week to uh, to look uh, what they are um, uh, because the transfer <laughs> season is coming, obviously. So we know more or less by January, let's say, what positions we need to fill for the next season. So for every position that we expect to uh, sign a player, of course, we develop certain alternatives. I think we use Comparisonator for, uh, in two stages. Number one, for uh, lead generation. For example, let's for the sake of uh, simplicity, let's say we need a, a new key goalkeeper. Then, of course, we uh, it allows us the, your platform allows us to uh, basically scan and find the right type of player in terms of uh, age, uh, experience, uh, the league, uh, and all this, so that we use it as uh, to create a first long list of uh, potential alternatives. Then we go to, it's of course, there's the video analysis. Uh, we also uh, uh, make these observations in the technical department. But once we shorten the list to two, three players, again, in our uh, scouting system, there's a, a, a database, that, uh, our own database, that includes all this information and reports. Uh, uh, that is where comparisonator is used for the second uh, uh, phase again. Let's say we are down to two or three alternatives because then you have to start commercial uh, discussions, negotiations. Maybe the club doesn't want him to. All of them together. Yes, yeah. yeah, so you have to run these in parallel, of course, for uh, every position. When we have that shortlist, we again generate a specific comp comparisonator uh, model 
uh, to look at the alternatives. Then obviously you have certain ratings. Uh, uh, so it's digital in the beginning, some kind of conventional or traditional uh, in the middle. And at the end, again, we use compressionator to arrive at that final decision to help us. Uh, uh, Shitan, by the way, the uh, how do you see this AI involvement inside football? As you know, compressionator AI, has it been useful to you or is it acting like a human now and where the entire industry is going you think few questions at the same time well i mean to take it to the extreme of course we also use it especially for to, to simulate how a player would have performed in uh this league that league that position uh, this position alternatives etc so i i mean i think if you told technical people about such a system let's say 15 years ago, they would be like uh, our grandfathers who would uh, uh, see internet. So <laughs> that is a huge, incredible uh, situation, I think. Like it's, it, they would probably call it a miracle or uh, something like this, but it's incredible, so useful to, and I, I know that you are very keen on uh, developing uh, the, new uh, features, new uh, characteristics, uh, uh, new tools, et cetera, because uh, there are, uh, you know this better, but there are also many uh, small startups trying to uh, hit the same target, but obviously you are well advanced and established. Uh, so it's also innovation. You can never say, okay, this is our solution as compersonator. This is what we offer and then go silent. It's not like a Windows update that comes every two years or something. You have to basically uh, innovate all the time. You are doing this, obviously, and AI is a big part of it. I How the where the industry is going, I don't know. Probably at one point we will see full games simulated even. Uh, I know it sounds quite uh, novel uh, today, but maybe in 10 years you may be able to simulate games before even they are uh, played. Uh, yeah, it will be an exciting period for sure. But I mean, you, I, I see compersonator. I'm especially happy that you uh, managed to do this from uh, from Istanbul, uh, a very important football country, of course, Turkey. And uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's. I'm quite proud that uh, such an initiative came out from uh, the city I grew in. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And uh, it was lovely to uh, see you again and uh, hope to see you very soon. Thank you very, very much for this.